These last few days we have reviewed more workstation laptops than ever. First was the Precision 15 3560 and now we have the HP ZBook Power G7. The latter is a true performer, with its processor choices going as high as the Core i9-10885H, with a server-grade Xeon W10855M also being available. Unfortunately, many manufacturers now have workstation laptops, which are powered by low TDP chips that aren't designed to handle such a heavy load. The ZBook Power doesn't fall into that category as the Core i9 CPU inside is plenty powerful, with even the Xeon processor making total sense, allowing for ECC memory support, which is crucial in certain scenarios. The laptop is also outfitted with NVIDIA Quadro graphics, which are made to handle heavy 3D rendering and modeling work. Today we are presenting you with Laptop Media's top 5 picks about the HP ZBook Power G7. Being a proper workstation device, the build quality is definitely on point, and that's reflected in the price tag as well. The body is made of 100% aluminum, which makes it incredibly sturdy. There was little to no flex to be seen. The laptop is also incredibly portable, considering the hardware inside and the 15-inch form factor. The laptop weighs only 1.89 kilograms and is 22.9 millimeters tall. Design-wise, there is a Z logo on the lid, which is awfully similar to the Nissan Z logo, not in a bad way, of course. Furthermore, there is a small HP logo on the bottom bezel, below the display. The lid can easily be opened with a single hand, and doing so reveals the matte display with narrow bezels and an HD webcam, and an IR sensor for face recognition on top, with a manually operated privacy shutter. Please remember, it would be of great help to us if you just hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. That would motivate us to make even more and better videos for you. The upgradability here is top-notch. Both the RAM and storage can be expanded, through two SOTOM slots, which can fit up to 64GB of DDR4 memory in dual channel mode, and two M.2 NVMe slots, which if you configure the laptop with a Xeon CPU, get support for ECC memory, with half of the maximum capacity supported. If it's your first time digging into a laptop's internals, and you are unsure what to do, we will leave our detailed teardown video, which shows all the necessary steps you need to take, to safely access both the SOTOM and M.2 slots. The keyboard and touchpad combination is amazing, as the keyboard has spill resistance and a backlight. The keyboard has decent key travel and a very satisfying, yet quiet click. This makes for a great typing experience and the fact that we saw little to no flex from the base gave us an even better feel when typing. It's not without its shortcomings, though, as the arrow keys are pretty small and the backspace and power button are identical. However, HP has made sure that a one-time click does nothing, so you wouldn't accidentally shut off your laptop. The touchpad is great as well, as it has a smooth, glass-covered surface. It offers smooth gliding and accurate tracking. Furthermore, it has a very comfortable and clicky mechanism. With a battery unit that has 83 watt-hours capacity, the laptop lasts for 8 hours and 15 minutes of web browsing, and 13 hours and 24 minutes of video playback, which is pretty good, considering the powerful hardware that it has. As always, we do our battery tests with the Windows Better Performance setting turned on, screen brightness adjusted to 120 nits, and all other programs turned off except for the one we are testing the notebook with. Finally, the 15.6-inch display here needs some more work. While it has a full HD resolution and an IPS panel, it's not without its falls. We would have loved a better unit, as this one covers only 53% of the sRGB color gamut. However, the laptop still has other redeeming qualities such as comfortable viewing angles and a high contrast ratio of 1170 to 1. Furthermore, the panel showed no PWM usage, making it safe to use for prolonged periods of time. Color accuracy isn't what we would have hoped for either, as even with our design and gaming profile, we only managed to bring the Delta E value to 4.0 from 4.5. Here are the results of the color accuracy test. Of course, we don't see all that as a huge issue since workstations are mostly used with an external display.